I know a lot of you have been eagerly anticipating the new Stayball Match powder from Winchester, and that's the subject of this video. Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. We've been having a lot of fun with Hodgdon's new Stayball powders. Stayball 6.5 has been a staple in the Ultimate Reloader reloading room. We've used it with multiple cartridges. It's been a great performer. And at the SHOT Show, you saw me talk to Aaron Olger about Stayball Match, the subject of this video, and Stayball HD. We've got content in this video covering Stayball Match, and we've got a future video planned for Stayball HD. And then why not? I think we're going to compare all three Stayball powders by throwing Stayball 6.5 into the mix. And what's cool about this powder is its unique blend of attributes. It's a spherical powder, so it's going to meter really good out of a bench measure if you don't want to have to trickle, or even a progressive, including loading match ammunition. Uh, we've had really good luck with it, and we've got a really cool story planned where we're going to compare just throwing powder and not trickling versus complete OCD single stage reloading and see what kind of results we get at long range. That's for later. Make sure you're subscribed. Okay, this is a double base powder. It's got the copper fouling eraser uh, additive to it, so it's going to help to prevent copper fouling in your barrel. It's temperature insensitive. That's another really important part. That's what the whole Stayball uh, promise is. The meterability of a spherical powder with the temperature insensitivity that you don't typically find with spherical powders. Great combination. And it's ideal for high BC, heavy for caliber bullets, which is obviously the trend, the way things are, are trending towards. Okay, first question you probably have is burn rate. Well, there's a simple answer to that question. One of the most popular powders out there is one of Hodgdon's extreme powders, which is Varget. It's been one of the hottest products in the last few years. Very, very hard to find with the component shortages. Fortunately, that is changing. But Varget is not a spherical powder, right? I've used Varget for a number of things. 6GT, 6Dasher, 223, 308, and the list goes on. It's a very versatile powder, and I've shot my most tight set of groups with Varget. So I'm totally sold on this burn rate, okay? But it's not going to meter as well out of something like a progressive press powder measure. This changes now with, with the Stayball lineup of powders. So if you're familiar with Varget, you're going to find this powder jumping right into that same burn rate range. It is going to be great for 223. It's going to be great for 308, 6 Dasher, 6 GT, even 30-06. So this is a versatile powder. And if there's any question, you can look right on the bottle. It says, ideal for 223 Remington, 224 Valkyrie, 22 250, 308 win, 30 6 and many more. So if you're going to be in that same burn rate range, it's likely that you'll want to take a look at this powder. And the data is up on Hodgson's Reloading Data Center. So that's a great place to go if you want to see if the cartridge that you want to load for is a good candidate for this powder. Okay, I did some quick testing with 6GT. That was kind of the first thing that came to mind because I've been working with 6GT lately. I just did a full custom Cerakote job on my full custom 6GT and I felt like taking it out and shooting it and this, this powder has been on my list for, for a while for that. So what I did was I, I went down below max I did four different charge weights, 35.5 grains, 36 grains, 36.5 grains, and 37 grains. And I decided to see what kind of velocity am I gonna get? What is my standard deviation gonna look like? And what kind of group do I see? Now this is a group sample of one, right? And, and also a sample of one average velocity and one SDD. So you're gonna see a little bit of variation, obviously, if you're gonna shoot successive groups, and that's kind of what I plan to do is go a little more in depth with this powder. And I was using Sierra's 107 grain SMK bullet. This is a great shooting bullet. All of my groups average to less than half MOA. So that was a great result to see right from the get-go. And I should note here that I'm using a 28 inch barrel. 
So my velocities are potentially a little bit higher than what you're gonna see if you're shooting something like a 24 inch barrel from 6GT. So right from the get-go, we were at 3,000 feet per second. SD on that one was 24.1, and the group was 0.453 inches for five shots at 100 yards. For 36 screens, we had 3055 for an average velocity and an SD of 13.1, which is good, and a group of 0.574. For 36.5, we had an average velocity of 3056. Now, this is the interesting thing. Between 36 and 36.5, you can see the velocities, the average velocities were almost identical. Very interesting. But the SD went up to 18.8, and the group was 0.574. Then, at 37 grains, which is the published max load for this particular scenario, 3120, that is cooking. With an SD of 14, that's good, and a group size of 0.480 inches for that five shots at 100 yards. And over on the right here, we can see a graph. Now note that that starts at 2800 and ends at 3200. So we're kind of zooming into the difference to see kind of how that average velocity varies with charge weight. So this is a great start. This is not in-depth load development. This was basically just load up some rounds and go shoot them, chronograph them, measure the group size. There are some additional variables I wanted to take a look at, like looking at 0.2 grain increments around some of these good loads and maybe adjusting seating depth, maybe even putting on the EC tuner brake. So more work to do there. Meanwhile, Kyle from our team loaded up some 223 rounds and some 308 rounds and did some quick chrono tests there. And what we wanted to do was to use kind of classic bullet weights. We used 55 grain for the 223 and 155 for the 308. For the 223, the charge weight was 26.5, yielding a velocity of 3,161 feet per second, which is cooking along really good. For the 308, it was uh, 48.5 grains of stable match for the 155 grain bullet, yielding a velocity of 2,893. So good velocity performance with these other cartridges. We didn't really do any in-depth testing. It was pretty much just load near max, shoot, chrono, and see kind of where we were gonna end up. Okay, so if we take a look under the microscope, let's zoom in on this powder. Uh, here we have a, an image showing stable match next to Varget next to Winchester 760, next to CFE 223. And you can see here there's differences in texture, there's differences in color, and the granule sizes, definitely Varget is kind of the largest. And then we have a pretty consistent uh, 22 thousandths of an inch by 44 thousandths of an inch, that's a flattened ball uh, set of, of parameters. Uh, for most of those. The CFE 223 is kind of more as a, of a spherical shape at that smaller diameter of 22 thousandths of an inch. So hopefully that allows you to envision what this powder looks like when we get up real close, the color, the texture, and the size of the granules. Kind of an interesting comparison. Okay, so in conclusion, we're just getting started with this powder. It's temperature stable with the copper reducer it's gonna meter really well. That's a really great collection of positive attributes. It's versatile with regard to the cartridges that it is optimal for. Uh, one of the limitations with, with this powder right now is it's in really high demand. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get your alerts set on your favorite website or you frequent your local components store so that you can get a hold of some. It's new, this is to be expected, you know, it, it's not uncommon for, for new powders that are in high demand to be a little difficult to get. Okay, and best for, best for a lot of cartridges, really. Everything from 223 to 30-06. So here's my question for you is, what would you like to see us test Stayball Match with next? And we are gonna be doing Stayball HD here very shortly. What would you like to see us test with Stayball HD? And if you wanna answer this other question, what are you planning to use Stayball Match for, or what would you if you happen to have some? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're going to want to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.